about two months ago, I had Robert Jordan put his Jordan key on my Mooseman 222 bassoon. I have played a couple of the Weisberg system instruments at some conferences. And my experience with those was that I was impressed with how automatic the mechanism made getting into the um, flicked notes so effortless. However, I was turned off by the complexity of the mechanism, the fact that you had to learn how to use a pinky whisper key, um, and also that there were so much extra weight to the instrument as a result of all the additional key work that was put on it. So the idea, however, I liked. So when Robert had simplified the mechanism to just something that was, it's just a, a pad cup attached to the whisper key rod that um, closes a second hole on the wing joint. It operates in tandem with the whisper key. I thought this sounds like something that I can actually get behind. Um, so a friend of mine who I respect deeply had tried it out and gave it his endorsement after trying it at Robert's Bassoon Lodge. So I sent my instrument to him and had him put the key on. Uh, when I got the instrument back, I was less impressed with what I experienced than what I was hoping for. Um, so with the mechanism as I received it, um, uh, I noticed that it, it did add some clarity when I was already in that register, but it didn't help me as much as I had hoped actually slurring into that register. Um, so I still needed to do quite a bit of voicing changes to make that happen. It wasn't as immediate. So you'll notice if, so if I have the whisper lock on, if I play C in the staff and add the vent key, the upper octave is gonna come out whether I make a change here or not. Now the upper octave will be very flat. It's not in tune, but it's gonna be in that octave. <laughs> Not making any change here so it's a very flat octave you have to make the change with your voicing and your tongue and whatever else but as soon as you press the vent key the note comes out and i was hoping for something kind of like that out of the jordan key it doesn't quite get you there So if I increase the air support and I let it go, then I'm, I'm gonna get to that upper octave. So there's a little bit of a delay compared to um, when you're using the vent, vent keys. Um, the other thing though that I noticed is that it did change some notes in some less desirable ways. So the main flick notes, A through C and C sharp, I think were pretty improved. So <clears throat> besides getting to the octave that I wanted to be in, um, it does raise the pitch on a couple of the notes. Um, particularly, I noticed the A, top space, or sorry, top line A. So that's with the Jordan key open. That top line A, uh, is a little higher in pitch than before, which on my instrument is good. Um, and I would usually vent that note to raise the pitch on that note because it was flat otherwise. C sharp also pretty highly clarified compared to the normal C sharp. Now, if you're a bassoonist who uses the fingering with the right hand for that C sharp all the time, the Jordan key isn't gonna help you at all compared to what you're used to. So this is the long fingering. That octave is going to come out with that fingering no matter what. In fact, I teach that as the slur or flicked fingering for that note while I normally use the short left hand alone C sharp. So normally we would have to flick or vent with the D key on that, which we can't do because we only have one thumb. So the Jordan key helps with that C sharp. <laughs> So that C sharp has greatly helped. Now, when I got to the D, yes, I can slur to it, but as you probably know, that D tends to be a little under in pitch on most bassoons anyway. And on this mechanism, 
actually, strangely enough, lowered the pitch on that D a little. And you can hear this. It's a very subtle change. It's only a few cents, but a few cents matters. If I close the whisper key while I'm playing the D, you can hear that the note goes up just a little bit when I press the whisper key down. I'm trying to make as little change up here as I can. I'm trying to just blow and let the key do the thing. Um, you might also hear the resonance changes. Now I'm gonna turn my vocal a little so that the whisper key pip stays open. Um, so you're just hearing the difference between the Jordan key note and the not Jordan key note. So it's a subtle difference. Notice the, the closing the whisper key off didn't really change uh, too much once you're actually in that octave. Here's where we started to, where I, I noticed some problems uh, with that, at least the way that he had set up the tone hole on my instrument. So when I go to the, the E flat, E and F, I notice I could hear quite a bit of fuzz in the sound. Um, so I'm, I'm hearing the air come out of the tone hole. little changes as I add the whisper key and, and remove the whisper key, which closes the Jordan key as well. F sharp, however, I discovered in a rehearsal cycle shortly after I got the instrument was really negatively affected. I had a very difficult time making a diminuendo taper on the note, and I also had a hard time entering in at a very soft dynamic on that note. Um, I normally play this F sharp four without the third finger, um, and basically what I was experiencing was as if I had the third finger down. Um, so that F sharp. So there's that little croak at the beginning of the note when I try to sneak in. And it goes to that kind of croak. Now I can normally get that note to have a really soft diminuendo taper. I'm gonna to try to do this by turning the vocal so that the Jordan key is closed. No croak at the beginning or the end of the note. Now the other thing that I noticed is that the resonance on that note was really negatively affected. So you can hear this. I'm, I have to set the vocal back to the normal position on the whisper key. And I'm playing about mezzo piano, so I'm gonna play much stronger now. So it's less affected when you're playing very loudly. Now this makes sense because he, essentially what's happening is you have a leak in the instrument, which is what the whisper key pip does too. So if you recognize that, you realize that when you have a leaky instrument, you have to blow a little harder to compensate for the leak. So when you're playing very loudly, you don't really hear these differences. But if I'm trying to make a taper to that very soft dynamic or even playing mezzo piano, you can really hear a difference in the resonance of that note, I think. So if you're picking out a vocal, or if you're one of those people who uses a Lefrec because you believe that that adds some extra resonance to the instrument or something, um, this whole affects the resonance, at least on those tenor register notes, the E flat up through the F sharp, far more than even changing out the vocal would, I think. Uh, certainly more than the, the, the little magic spoons, um, no matter where you put them. So if you're concerned about the resonance or the taper, the tone hole size of this is really a big factor. Um, now, the other problem that I had with this was acoustically, was going up to the extreme high register. So if I try to play, um, I'm gonna 
put the whisper lock on and play a chromatic scale from high C sharp up through F. <laughs> So aside from a bad start on the first C-sharp, you can hear I don't really have a problem getting to the high F. Now if I take the whisper key off and play them with the Jordan key open, I have yet to get the F to come out um, with my F key. Um, now I haven't actually tried the harmonic F fingering. Um, I'll do that right now. Okay, the, the E was really being stubborn for me. So I could get the harmonic to come out, but with my F key, which is how I normally play that F, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't agreeing with me at all. And if you play the slur from C sharp to the high E, as in the Ravel Piano Concerto, I have a problem with this slur with the Jordan key open. <laughs> So the first time I got it to come out, but if I'm relaxing even a little bit, it doesn't work so well. Let's put the whisper lock on. Well, maybe my reed just isn't playing nicely with that E today. Let's turn the vocal. Yeah, there it is. I need the whisper key to be open to make that slur happen. No problem there. With the Jordan key open though, I can feel a resistance even on the first C sharp that it's not quite as stable as I'd like it to be. So I'm not going to play Bolero, but Bolero would be another one that I'd be a little bit concerned about. So Robert has talked about um, making a sort of a clutch mechanism or some sort of deactivation mechanism for this um, that I think would be useful for a lot of players. Now he has had other players demonstrate this playing up to the high F with the F key. Um, he mentioned another player who was playing up to high G and whatever, just fine with the Jordan key. That's great. Um, that has not been my experience as you can hear um, with the mechanism on my instrument for me. Um, now, when I mentioned this on a different Facebook post, um, Robert got a little bit defensive um, and in some personal messages to me, um, he criticized my reed design uh, as a reason why those high notes weren't coming out, that my reed design wasn't good for playing high notes or that I would need a better high note vocal. Um, I purchased this vocal about 10 years ago, a little more than 10 years ago, specifically as a high note vocal. I have never had issues playing high Fs with this vocal or with my reeds. I haven't changed my reed design in any sort of a fundamental way in about 10 years as well. Um, and at proof of concept, I was also testing this with a reed that I didn't make that was on a shape that I don't use. Um, so um, on a Rieger 1A shape made by Lee Munoz. And I was having exactly the same issues with that reed as I do with my own reeds. So I'm comfortable with my setup. I don't believe that it's my reed. Um, it's not my instrument, um, although with, with this now, that is the, the concern. So does it affect the flick notes the way that we intend? Yes. I, I think that the, the idea of the slurring from the lower octave to the upper octave, um, if this is the right size, will, um, will get you there. Um, uh, it's not quite as immediate as flicking or venting will be, but it's, um, you know, it's obviously less intrusive with your left thumb. Um, but I have some acoustical problems that are, I think, more significant. So f most of the time I've been playing with this taped off. I'm actually trying different pieces of tape on it with then holes pricked in the tape to make the hole smaller to try to get the same effect as the key is intended for, but to not negatively affect the other things. I think I figured that out. I don't have that currently. Now, my other issue was with the installation itself. So. I'm probably going to ruffle a feather or two with this, but when I received my instrument back, um, I had a couple, there were some concerning points. Um, one, initially, my immediate reaction was that I noticed that my whisper key rod had been bent very significantly. 
So I was seeing the whisper key rod bowed outward like this. So it was quite arched to the point where it wasn't even contacting the little guard. Um, it was very, very obvious. This wasn't a subtle change. This was a very su significant change to the shape of the, of the rod. The reason that that had been done was to line up the whisper key pip and the Jordan key mechanism so that they closed at the same time. Basically, this wasn't open enough. And so his fix, because I opted not to get the adjustment screw mechanism on my whisper key, was to bend the rod so that the whisper key was closer to the pip so that it closed sooner so that this would close at the same time. Um, it changed the travel of the whisper key in a significant enough way that it bothered me. So I, I took my instrument to my repair technician um, to, to see if we could straighten that rod and readjust the mechanism in some way. There were a few other things that I wanted him to look at as well. There was this screw on my F key mechanism. I'm, I'm assuming he had to take a lot of the keys off in order to install the mechanism, which is fine. Um, but some of the screws weren't placed back the way that they were. Um, so here there was, um, my instrument has an unusual um, ball bearing mechanism with a locking screw on it. The Mooseman Bassoons, um, the 222 series has this. So you can see there's a locking screw there and the actual pivot screw was sticking out a lot. And it wasn't that way when I sent it to him. Um, so I think that some of the screws got mixed around on it um, and maybe they weren't as interchangeable as he thought. So we, my repair technician was able to manage that and, and, and correct those because those are actually kind of sharp. Um, they have some sharp edges. Um, he did also, my repair technician also did manage to straighten out the rod, but in order to do that, he needed to replace the whisper key pad, or sorry, the pad on the pad cup here. And, and this is where Robert's gonna get very mad at me. In order to get the key to move down, he tried, you know, he bent it as much as he could, but it doesn't bend so much. Um, to get the travel to be greater, filed down the chimney on the, on the, um, the Jordan key hole itself, which re revealed that the hole inside was actually bigger than the hole on the outside. So I'm compensating for that at the moment, and it's back to more or less the same size and feel that it was when I initially received it. Um, so this has actually been a benefit in that I'm able to close the, the whisper key with the right travel. The rod is straight now, um, but I should have had him put the adjustment screw on the whisper key. So if you are gonna get the Jordan key on your instrument, don't make the same mistake I did. Get the mechanism that allows you to adjust the angle of the whisper key pad so that the rod doesn't have to be bent and, and tweaked after the fact. So. The hole was too big now and completely ruined a number of the nodes because it was a huge leak. So um, I have it partially plugged at the moment. Um, I found a better way to do that with actually a little bit of tape and literally a pin prick. So the hole needs to be smaller than it was initially, I think, and also obviously smaller than it is now. Um, so a, a, a few issues with the actual installation um, and I, I'm and finally figured out after a couple of months what I need to do then to, to make the mechanism work a little bit better for me. Um, the smallest hole doesn't negatively affect my high F or those upper tenor register notes that I demonstrated, um, but the downside is that then the flick notes aren't quite as fixed as they would be as if the hole were open. I mean, if you think about how big the tone hole is in the the vent keys in the back, you know, that's that's a very significant size hole. This has to be much, much, much smaller than that. So um, one other tiny little thing, just if for anyone to be aware of, um, the blocking on my case needed to be changed as well. Um, I have a Marcus Bona 2 bassoon case. The blocking for the wing joint on that um, happens to sit exactly on top of the Jordan key. So I had to move the blocking um, in that case so that it didn't interfere with the mechanism. So I had to move the block from here to here, um, which isn't a big deal in my case, but if you have a wooden case with permanent blocking for your wing joint, 
and it happens to set about here on the uh, wing, uh, you might need to consider um, some, some other change to your case. So just be aware that that might be uh, something that happens because normally this place is, is totally bare, right? So not a panacea for the flicked notes um, and depending on the size of the hole that was put in here, um, could be a negative for some other notes. So am I 100% happy with it? N no. Um, do I think that it's ruined my instrument? No, uh, it's, it's easy enough to disable the, the mechanism completely, just plug the hole. Um, or in my case, apparently open up the hole more and then put a little piece of tape over it and a pinprick in order to make the mechanism work properly. So um, I'm not dissuading anyone from getting the Jordan key. I'm number 30 to get this and he has more than 45 instruments now that he's installed the key on and I seem to be the only detractor so far. Um, the, those people who have commented on the key have all said only positive things for it. Um, so maybe I'm an outlier, uh, or my instrument is, or the fact that I wasn't present when he installed the mechanism because I shipped him the instrument, um, could be part of it. The, it, the plus side is that it is fixable and adjustable if it doesn't turn out the way that you had hoped, um, I guess. It's taken me a little bit of fixing for that. Um, so I'm looking forward to his defeating mechanism and also, um, if, if he'll still take my instrument after this video, um, having an adjustment screw so that I can use other vocals than this one with the instrument too. If I put a heckle vocal on this instrument, it won't close the whisper key now because of the positioning of the, the key work. So, um, so there we go. There's my kind of detailed pros and cons to the Jordan key. Happy New Year.